Greetings, transporters. I'm Dr. Kelsey Ralph, and today we're going to do an introduction to traffic flow. Last time, we talked about how congestion is like waiting in line for the bathroom. This analogy breaks down in one important way. For bathroom breaks, the number of people waiting in line does not affect how long it takes to use the toilet. By contrast, the number of people using the roadway does affect how long it takes to use the roadway. In other words, vehicle density affects speed. When there are few cars on the roadway, drivers can travel quite fast. But as we add cars, drivers must slow down. Here's what that looks like graphically. As we add cars to the roadway, drivers must slow down. You'll notice that this is a non-linear relationship. So we've talked about speed, which is pretty intuitive, and we've talked about vehicle density, the number of cars per mile in a lane. Traffic flow is density times speed, or the number of cars per hour passing a point on a roadway. You can think of flow as the number of cars who pass under this sign each hour. Individuals care about speed. Planners and engineers, they care about flow. Do you think flow is higher when there are few cars or when there are many? It's not fair. It's a trick question because it totally depends. Let's take a look. This is the 405 during Carmageddon. In this photo, the 405 has very low density and someone could drive very fast but flow is pretty low. Here, we still have pretty low density and drivers are still able to maintain a high speed. Here, flow is higher still. Here, density is high and speeds are high. Which lane do you think has the highest flow? In this photo, density is so high that drivers have to slow down to a crawl flow here is very low. I want you to take a moment to think about the relationship between flow and density. Try to graph out each of the points we've seen so far. Here's what that looks like. Low density and low flow in the lower left corner. And as we move to the right, we increase density and increase flow up until a point. And then adding more cars actually reduces the flow of the roadway. It looks something like this. Here's actual data from a roadway. Each point represents the number of cars passing through and the vehicle density. You can see that upside down U shape like we saw before. Now we can graph the relationship between speed and flow. Why don't you try? Here's what it looks like. Here's another set of real data. Let's compare two points on this curve. In both, the flow is exactly the same. The same number of vehicles are getting through the lane per hour. In one, drivers are traveling 65 miles an hour. In the other, they're traveling just 40 miles per hour. Which roadway would you rather drive on? And remember, flow in both cases is exactly the same. So far, we've seen that vehicle density is linked to both speed and flow. When density gets too high, speeds fall and flow decreases. To recap, vehicle density affects speeds non-linearly. Flow is the number of cars passing by a point each hour and flow is equal to density times speed. Managing vehicle density keeps speeds and flow high. That's all for today. Until next time, safe travels.